Yes, my dear friend, welcome to the channel. This is Salon's blog. I'm excited, I'm elated to come your way this afternoon with this special first edition of our podcast. Yes, first edition of our podcast, Salon's blog podcast. First one throughout. Since we started this channel, this is our first ever podcast. Don't go anywhere, stay glued because we are going to be spending time at least 30 to 40 minutes with you right now make sure you watch to the end because the end matters a lot there are exclusives at the end look don't just start watching don't get tired because the ending part is more exciting than the beginning you know when you start something you build out the momentum you begin to grow in it develop it then gradually before you end it, the excitement is at the end of it so don't go anywhere make sure you watch it fully dear friend well 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 it is chelsea it is all about chelsea let me know where you are watching me from. You are in Africa. Which part of Africa are you? Are you in Ghana? You are in Uganda, South Africa, Kenya, Malawi, Nigeria. Yes, and my big brothers. <laughs> Nigeria, Togo, Benin Republic, Niger, Liberia. Where, where are you watching me from on the African continent? Let me know in the comment section. And tell me what you think about our first podcast. And if you are here in Asia with me, I'm grateful you are part of this channel. This is Salon's blog, Chelsea's channel for that matter. This is where we talk about Chelsea. Other news, yes, we can talk about other news, but they are not that important. It's everything about Chelsea that we talk about here. Dear friend, you are in Europe or you are in America, Canada, I'm grateful you are part of this. And this is your first podcast on this channel. Don't go anywhere. Let me hear from you in the comment section. If you are new, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video and comment on the video. I'll be grateful to hear from you. Remember to share the video. Share it, this podcast. Let it go viral. Because this is where you belong. This is your channel. Make it your own. Quickly, in this podcast, we are going to be talking about a lot of things. Yes. Sack Mauricio Pochettino. Do you think that will bring the solution? Do you think sacking Pochettino is the answer to Chelsea's problems? All right, so what about the ownership? These owners are businessmen, American businessmen. And every businessman likes to invest money and make profit. Do you think they are at the right place, the right club to make money? You as a Chelsea fan, would you like your club to become a business only for the owners to be making money? <laughs> what about the recruitment directors? The young guys that are you know, in charge of our recruitment, Paul Winstanley and Co. What about them? Should they continue to be doing their job? Are they, are they doing a great job? Looking at the signings they made so far, last summer till now. And hey, coming back to the main, the, the, the footballing aspect. The players, are you satisfied with the players we have? Are they living up to expectation? More especially the ones that we saw coming in in the summer, Casado and Co. Are you satisfied with, their, with what, they, what they are doing? Even the ones that are injured. Romeo Lavia played only 32 minutes so far this season. Let me hear your thoughts on all this. Because I'm going to be talking about all this one by one. Now, the players injured, Romeo Lavia, for instance, is not coming back this season, until next season. Do you think that they could have made the, 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 the squad more complete? Would have been seen different result right now if they were to be fit? Romeo Lavia, Christopher Nkuku, Rhys James, and hey, our defense, <laughs> I told you this episode this podcast is loaded our defense yes we, we have defenders that are top notch in quotes that are ill or that have injury wesley fofana he is a top top notch center back but got injured and he's been out for how long over a year now resumes our right back do you think if this place were to be fit, our defense would have still be leaking these kind of goals? I am trying to bring your mind to all the problems that Chelsea had this season. Then we analyze it. We can now give a conclusion. 
Do you get it? All right, let's get started. Mauricio Pochettino said that the philosophy, formations, style of play, whether you defend or dominate a game isn't important. But players need to feel you want the best for them. Explains why there is no system at Chelsea right now. That is my opinion. But then, we as a great thing started right now. And we are starting with the, own, with the owners. Yeah. The, the moves our owners have been making since they took over is insane and shocking for the businessmen they are. Like I told you, I just gave you the breakdown of the things we are going to be discussing. And we are starting right away with the owners. And that is why I said, the moves our owners have been making since they took over this club, since they took over Chelsea, is insane and shocking for the businessmen they are coming from America. It's insane for the businessmen they are coming from America. They decline... The, de the decline, the decline of this club, Chelsea, the decline began when they bought around 300 million worth of players for Thomas Tuchel and sacked him not long after. That was when the problem started. <clears throat> Why did they make such a commitment when they knew they were going to fire him? Why? Why did they bought him those players, uh, uh, Thomas Tuchel, over 300 million worth of players, and end up sacking him in few weeks after? Why? Why did they make such a commitment when they knew he wasn't going to be there for long? It made and makes absolute no sense to date. Yeah. Which brings me to this question. When did they decide to build their model project? When did the owners begin to build their model or the project? Paul Wynn Stanley, as the head of that department, recruitment directors, the head of that department, Paul Wynn Stanley, we know where he's coming from. He came from Brighton. He came from Brighton. And since his arrival, we bought players, like, about how many players from Brighton? At least we can, I, I can remember off my head, Casado and Sanchez from Brighton. Is these two players that we bought, are they living up to expectation? No. Sanchez, as a matter of fact, was a third choice at Brighton. Just to remind you. Casado is a shadow of himself as of now at Chelsea. So, I would like to ask, when did they decide to build their model or so-called project with Chelsea? Is it before they brought in the 30 million players for Thomas Tuchel or after they sacked him? Because if they knew right from the time the model they wanted to build, if they knew right from the time the model they wanted to build, why did why did go through the trouble of getting to cool those players? Why did they go through the trouble of getting those players for Thomas Tuchel? When they, if they knew that the model they want to build is the current squad that we have, the current model we have in place, why did they go through the trouble of buying those players for Thomas Tuchel? Then they hired Graham Potter on a five-year contract. Consequently had to pay him a compensation of 13 million pounds after firing him. You now get brought in Graham Potter for five years. And after a few, few months, you sack him and you give me a compensation of 13 million pounds. Is that when the model started? Or the project? Is that when they, they got it started? What a bit of business that is. <laughs> what a bit of business that is. Dear friend, we then went ahead to buy a billion worth of players who wouldn't go for 100 million 10 years ago. We went ahead and bought a billion pound of players 
who wouldn't cost a hundred million ten years ago. When you spend a billion, you expect to have Galacticos in your team. Galacticos, you know Galacticos? Yeah. When you spend a billion pounds, you expect to have a players like, 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 how do you call it? What Real Madrid have right now in your team? Mbappe. Yes. You expect to have players like Mbappe in your team. Jude Bellingham in your team. Players that can deliver. Rodrigo in your team. You are gathering Galacticos when you spend a billion pounds. You expect to have Galacticos in your team, but we spend them all on kids with potential. Kids with potentials. Dear friend, <laughs> uh, we also have the fact, we also have the fact that Mauricio Pochettino is the seventh highest paid manager. Seventh highest paid manager in the world right now Mauricio Pochettino is the seventh highest paid manager in the world right now as we speak meaning Pep Guardiola uh, who mentioned their names Thomas Tuchel is the seventh highest paid play, uh, coach coach in the world right now the seventh highest paid coach right now in the world Thomas Tuchel that is criminal. It is. It is criminal. <laughs> uh, I hope you are following me right there. Yes, because I would like to be hearing from you in the comment section. I will try as much as I can to answer your question. You know, let it be a discussion in the comment section. <laughs> it is criminal. For a, for a club that's been strict with players' wages, a club of the street with the players' wages, and all until they have proven themselves, it's quite shocking. A club that has put in a, a, a how do you call it, a cap on the wages of the players that they cannot pay any player more than one hundred thousand pounds in Chelsea right now. When even Wolves, when Brighton, they are paying players one eighty, two hundred thousand pounds. When Arsenal are paying players two, three hundred thousand pounds, we place a cap that we cannot pay any player above one fifty thousand pounds. The mistakes that were made by, you know, going for, uh, how do you call it, Raheem Sterling from City, that is now on three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds He's the highest paid player, the only player that is taking that amount right now as we speak. No Chelsea player is taking two fifty. None. The highest is, is, I think, is around one eighty-five. Now we are saying that no player at Chelsea can take over one fifty thousand pounds How do we get players... Or, or Galacticos. We spent a billion pounds and we still don't have Galacticos. We have kids. Kids in our team. It's criminal that we have a coach who is the highest paid, seventh highest paid in the world of football right now. What credentials does he have to be given such an amount? What credentials? Does Pochettino have? Is it because he's coming from PSG? That is shocking. It was widely claimed that Bolly and Co. went around loopholes. Thought Bolly and Co. It's widely claimed that these Americans they like to work around loopholes in business. Outsmarted the system and whatnot, but well in trouble with the FFP rules right now. If we don't sell some of our homegrown players, Chelsea will be in a very big shit. End of, end of June. Meanwhile, the belief is that these owners, these American owners, they are smart enough. They like to work around loopholes. They, they observe systems. They check where are the loopholes in the system. They, they take advantage. Right now, if we don't sell homegrown players to make more profit, we will be in a very big problem with the FFP rules by the end of June. Yet, we are paying our coach so high. He's the seventh highest paid coach. The players that we are, that are supposed to be delivering for us on the pitch, we said we cannot pay them more than £150,000. No player should be taking more than that as a wage. Dear friend, 
I'm serious here right now. I'm not joking. We mean business. How has that happened then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. How did this happen? What went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong? These are questions I'm posing to you, my dear friend watching me out there. What went wrong? If these owners don't fix up, even if Pochettino goes, we will continue having problems. Yes, if these owners don't fix up the situation, even if Port is sacked, we will continue to have same similar problems. Because you can't just imagine who they will bring in to replace Pochettino. You can't imagine it. Who they are going to bring in to replace Pochettino. I asked you to hold on a little, right? Yeah, because I have my suggestion and I'll bring that for you getting to the end of it. Just wait for it. You can't imagine who they'll bring in to replace Pochettino and the sort of players they'll go for in the summer. They accompanied with the sporting directors. They accompanied with the sporting directors. They hide at the root of all the problems we are facing. The owners accompanied with the, with the sporting directors that they hide at the root of all Chelsea's problems we are facing right now. Dear friend, let me know from you, so far, <laughs> on this podcast, the first of its kind on this channel. Yes, the first of its kind on this channel. And just to chip in, which is a breaking news anyway, Everton has been handed a two-point deduction for breaking profit and sustainability rules again. A few months ago, they were 110 points deduction. That is where they are, where they are on the league table. Yes, the breaking news is that they've been handed another two-point deduction. <laughs> and that is where Chelsea is heading towards. That is where Chelsea are heading right now. Yes. If we don't buggle up, we'll be in a very big problem by the end of the season. Yeah. Well, before I go to the coaching side of the issue, the stories I have for you to, today or this afternoon, wherever you are, it depends on where you are, dear friend. Before I go to the coaching aspect of it, I also want you to understand that there is, it's, it is widely circulated from sources, trusted sources, that Chelsea are planning to bring in a Marquis, Marquis Winger signing to the club this summer amid new questions or new question marks internally over Raheem Sterling's future at the club. That is just by the way. Yeah. They are looking at signing, having a McHugh signing to replace Raheem Sterling in the summer. We wait to see what next in that regard. But then, quickly, dear friend, I am going back to where I decided I should have started from. Yes, where I should have started from. Sack Mauricio Pochettino and appoint Jose Moreno. Very controversial. <laughs> I got you right there. Very, very controversial, dear friend. Sack Pochettino and bring in Jose Moreno. It is my opinion. And I'll give you reasons why. And I'll tell you why. Dear friend, the current mood of the club, the current situation of Chelsea, the current squad that we have, and the direction we are heading doesn't speak well of Chelsea. There are only two coaches. There are only two coaches. Right now as we speak, Jose Moreno, Thomas Tuchel. These two coaches are the only coaches that can get things done and sorted out at Chelsea right now as we speak. Jose Moreno, Thomas Tuchel. These two coaches, they are the only coaches that can get things done and sort out at Chelsea. Sack Pochettino and appoint Jose Moreno or Thomas Tuchel. I'll start with Jose Moreno. What he can do. If Jose Moreno should come in right now, 
you can be guaranteed the FA Cup. <laughs> yes. If Jose Maurice should come in right now, right now, right now, you can be guaranteed the FA Cup and you can you can get a finish in the top six. If you think I'm lying, please let me hear from you in the comment section. If Jose Moreno comes in right now, you have a guarantee to get an FA Cup, to win the FA Cup this season. And you have a guarantee of getting through to the top six with this current squad we have. And that will be a perfect tonic for the supporters and the players. It will be a perfect tonic for the supporters and the players. Why would you back a loser for three to five years? Why? The excuses of Pochettino are getting out of hand. For him to make a statement that to get to that top level, you need three to five years in order for these players to mature. That is what he said. That you will need three to five years for this place to mature to that top level. It means that Poch cannot help issues. Just as much as we are calling for the owners to act or they leave our club for us alone. We also must speak about Pochettino right now. If he is to be sacked, which I don't foresee right now. I don't foresee that happening right now. That Tomatuku is going to be sacked right now. I don't foresee that. But if Porsche is to be sacked, then the whole structure, the only two coaches that can change things, that will not just accept anything from the two sporting directors, will be Thomas Tuchel and Jose Moreno. Moreno will sort us out at the back, the defense. It will lift everyone at the club up. It will lift our spirit up. Everyone at the club. He will then instill that siege mentality, the mentality of winning into the heart and mind of the players. Right now, the players we have, they don't have that still mentality. They don't have that siege mentality. They don't have the heart to play as men on the pitch. Listen, they are boys, but when you get on the field of play, you play with your heart as a man. These current players, they are not playing with their heart. They easily give up. You watch all of our games from first half, you will think we are winning. We go to second half and then we collapse. They don't play with heart as men. The only coach that can instill that spirit in them is Jose Moreno or Thomas Tuku. Yeah. Then coming when that is done we can be guaranteed a future. I understand many will say oh Jose Moreno will not last more than three two years. I understand but at least the structures will come back to place. The motivation will come back into the team. The winning ability, the winning mentality will come back into this squad. The players that are not used to the Premier League, that have not won any trophy before, that have not tasted a win, a trophy before, they, are, they will now understand what it takes to win trophies. I'm sorry to say, Pochettino doesn't understand what it takes to win trophies. He doesn't. If he, if he really understands that, Poch will not be making certain substitutions when you are winning a game. Second half, we are winning a game. And you took away Kopama. You took away Kopama, the most creative on the pitch of play. You took him out and you brought in Disasi. Disasi. You brought in Disasi. And in how many minutes was the goal scored? His first minute his first error led to the goal my dear friend my opinion might not be most be the most popular among you fans but i still stand by my word that the only coach 
that can get Chelsea out of this current condition or situation is Jose Moreno or Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel came into Chelsea at the time that things were about. We were listen. You know, Abramovich is a kind of man that he can see things from afar. Once a coach begins to lose games, two, three, four games, once he realizes that the dressing room is beginning to have problem, he will sack you. Thomas Tuchel came in. How many months did Thomas Tuchel use to arrange the squad that won the Champions League? These owners, they came in to buy a club that just won the Champions League. They came in to buy a club that just won the Club World Cup. They came in to buy a club that just won the Club Super, World, Super Cup, European Super Cup. Three trophies in a season. Then these owners came in to buy. And when they came in, the club was at top four. The club was playing in the top four. The Chelsea Football Club was in top four when these current owners came in. They did not come in to buy the club at the time that the club was, you know, languishing on eighth, tenth position. No. Even though there were crises, we were late, an embargo was on Chelsea. We couldn't purchase players for a whole season. Before the transfer of ownership, Chelsea, you, the UK government put an embargo on Chelsea. No player was sold. No contract was renewed. No new players were coming in. We were, and Thomas Tuku was able to, you know, steady the ship throughout that crisis period. No new players for a whole year. The players whose contract were expiring, it expired and they had to go. There was no contract negotiations. That was part of the embargo. No contract negotiations from from Chelsea side, no player's contract could be renewed, no new players could be brought in, nothing was being done, only to manage what you have. Even ticket, ticket, ticket to sell uh, shirts, Chelsea could not even sell franchise, franchise uh, I mean, their shirts, their jerseys, embargo everywhere. Yes, Thomas Tuku managed to get the best out of that squad, won the Champions League, Super League Cup, a club world cup and we're in the top four that is a club todd Bole and co the blue co that is a club they came to inherit in confession todd Bole said it that on on a, on a on a footballing side chelsea was an asset do you know what it means to have an asset an asset is something that's valuable that when you trade it you can you win i mean just he said Chelsea was an asset on the footballing side. On the business side, is where Chelsea was not doing well. Now, now, let me ask you watching me out there. Is Chelsea a, a football club for entertainment or is Chelsea a business center? Is a football club an entertainment center or is it a business center? Which one comes first? In a natural sense, which one comes first? This is a sporting activity, an entertainment and enter, entertaining activity. The sporting aspect comes first before the business aspect. When you build a sporting aspect and you have the winning squad there, the finance comes in automatically. When you build a club that is stable, you you get massive sponsorship. Why Real Madrid is the highest you know, club in the world, the biggest club in the world? Why? Because they build the club in a way that they win on the pitch of play. And every advertiser, every company who wants to advertise with Real Madrid is proud because they are, the club Real Madrid is in the European Championships, is always on top. The badge is showing everywhere. The advertisement on their product is showing everywhere. You don't languish on 11 position, 12 position, and you think you can get the best of sponsorship deals. No, never. Never. These new owners, until they regain the position, the right of position for Chelsea Football Club, even the business aspect they'll be losing. Because their investment that they made, all the investment, buying young talent, not every young talent develops to become a great player. 
We've seen a lot of young talent, 18 years, 19 years. We say, oh, this is the next Ronaldo. This is the next Messi. By the time they are 21, they, they fiddle out. They fizzle out. Yeah. What is the way forward? Our next game is against Everton. I want to believe that they are preparing to watch it. But let me ask you, how many Chelsea football fans right now can boldly point out, hit your chest, that this is a game we are going to be winning? Never. Sheffield United, the bottom team at the, on the league table, we could not beat them. We could not dominate them. <laughs> Everton that they were, you know, they were deducted points, and now it came to the news again, breaking news, that they are still being deducted another two points. They are coming in to fight for survival in the league. Can we dominate Everton game? Dear friend, well, you have done so well with me today. It is 30 minutes, 30 minutes plus, and I will soon be leaving you. My first podcast of the year. Let me hear from you in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Pochettino... The ownership, the sporting directors, the players, they are all responsible for our current position. They are all responsible for our current situation in Chelsea. But a bigger chunk of the blame is on the owners. In conclusion, dear friend, I'm repeating it again, the bigger chunk of the blame goes to the owners. They came in and they began to change everything rapidly. The system, the structure of the club, they began to change everything rapidly. Get rid of this, get rid of that. When Peter Cech left the club, I was surprised. Everybody was just leaving the club and it was more like people were coming in, they don't know what this club is all about. At least, there's something called transition. Transition means that there are old teams there that are helping the new team to get their feet on the ground before the old team leaves. There was nothing like transition. They just let go every one of them. It is what it is. The ownership and their model of footballing is where what landed us where we are right now. My first podcast of the year. And every week I will try to come with at least, a, at least one podcast. This one is the first one. So let me leave you here. I will see you in the next episode. The next one that will come. Exclusive videos for you today or tonight. See you when you see me. Remember, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel if it's your first time. And let me hear from you in the comment section. I love you all. See you again. Shalom and peace.